Modern games are massive. As much as I know that many of us would love to get stuck into more of these 100 hour plus worlds, the reality is that life just gets in the way. We have the small matter of employment to think about, partners, friends and pets that need attention. So what's the solution? You guessed it, jack in the job, dump the partner, set the pets free in a field somewhere and sell your ass for cash on the docks. The rest of the time is yours for Final Fantasy. Or we could play arcade games. Stay tuned for 10 of the very best you can pick up today. Select your character. We start with a bit of a preview treat. The guys at Kaleido Games have very kindly given me a hands-on with a preview build of their upcoming game, Smash and Roll, and as a huge fan of Bubble Bobble and Snow Brothers, I absolutely love this. The best arcade games are those that are simple to understand and play, but have the kind of high skill ceiling that keeps you hooked for hours, desperate to improve your score and abilities and get just one stage further. Initially choosing between two customizable characters, you'll eventually unlock as many as 12, all with different abilities and sports-related equipment used to turn monsters into giant balls for smashing around the screen. The idea is to take out as many baddies as you can in one go, picking up upgrades for exploding balls and extra speed amongst other perks. When the screen is clear, you move on to the next in that particular zone and you eventually end up with a pleasingly inventive boss battle. The pixel art and animation is superb in this game and the variety of options elevate the simple formula to something that can be tweaked and replayed almost endlessly. This is brilliant pure arcade and I thoroughly recommend that you add this to your Steam wishlist now. Ganryu 2 Hakuma Kojiro isn't a remaster or an upgrade, but a brand new sequel to Ganryu, the shinobi-like hack and slasher that was originally released in the arcades in 1999 and went on to have conversions for the Neo Geo and the Dreamcast. This is one of the most consistent and enjoyable games in this genre I've played for some time. Instantly it looks great, moves superbly and the soundtrack is excellent. You have an attack with your sword, throwing knives, a dash attack, a double jump, and you can spring off walls, all the while building a special meter for a super attack when you need it the most. It's effortless to pull off any maneuver you need, and you can choose to either tackle the levels methodically, searching out secrets, or absolutely race through them to set the fastest possible time. That said, Ganryo 2 isn't easy, and you can't expect the same kind of liberal checkpoint placement you might find in many other modern games. Each area is divided into two levels, and if you lose all of your lives at the end of the second level, you go back to the beginning of level one. Fortunately, the game will save wholly completed areas for future playthroughs, so you're never expected to complete the game in one thumb-twisting, agonizing sitting. Some of the bosses may lack the spectacle of other arcade games out there, but they are all fair and enjoyable to fight. Again, this is a fantastic looking game that reminded me of some of the tougher shinobi levels of old, and this is an easy recommendation for anyone looking for that kind of challenge. Xeno Crisis. Developer Bitmap Bureau seems to be going for some kind of Guinness World Record to release this game on as many different formats, old and new, as possible. At the time of recording, there are conversions for the Mega Drive, SNES, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, GameCube, N64, PlayStation Vita, PS4, Xbox One, PC and Switch. Clearly the developers have a keen interest in keeping physical media and the older consoles alive, and I have to respect that, even if you wonder just how many other companies will follow suit as we march ever closer to full digitization. With a classic pixel art look, Xenocrisis is an incredibly addictive twin-stick shooter, styled somewhere between Smash TV and James Cameron's Aliens. As one or two players, you stomp into a room with your machine gun, blat all the enemies and do the same again for so many rooms into the inevitable screen-filling boss. You'll pick up a wide variety of temporary bonus weapons as you progress, and I like that they're all on a timer as opposed to being ammo limited. It gives you a chance to really test out the new guns and adds a frantic pace as you try to complete as many rooms as possible while you have the perk. 
Between levels you can upgrade your character's health, firepower, speed and other abilities dependent on how many dog tags you manage to scoop up from the fallen enemies. And you'll need all the help you can get to progress. You only ever have limited continues and you won't carry anything forward into a new run. The original Windjammers was released in the arcades in 1994, or if you were lucky enough to strike oil in your back garden, you could also buy it for the Neo Geo home system. This modern sequel has been beautifully created by some of the developers behind the recent smash hit Streets of Rage 4, adding a level of sheen and clarity that really pops on any size screen and screams arcade. What we have here is effectively frisbee air hockey, with a few twists to the rules. The idea is to throw your disc into the scoring bins behind your opponent, with each section being worth more or fewer points, or drop shot your frisbee just over the net. Choosing from one of 12 different characters from around the world, each with their own stats for speed and throw strength, there's a surprising amount of nuance to the gameplay and controls. You can straight shot to the corners and bounce your disc off the walls. If you time things correctly, you can slap a shot back to your opponent for extra speed. You can even curve a shot using the analog stick to try and fox your opponent, and then there's jumping and slamming. And when your power bar is full, you can pull off a character-specific special move that looks flashy and is much harder to intercept. The stage variety is excellent, and I love how each court has its own rules and obstacles. The casino is a particular highlight, with the role of the one-armed bandit wheels deciding how many points the next score will be worth. Unfortunately, Windjammers 2 makes that classic arcade mistake of presenting an easy mode that's far too easy and a normal mode that's too hard and often unfair. As such, and with so few people playing this online, you'll get by far the most mileage out of the local two-player, which is brilliantly competitive and addictive. You can't have a list of arcade games without a scrolling shmup, and in fact I can offer you three for the price of one here. I completely understand if you're frowning at the moment. Vasaro is nowhere near as recognisable as R-Type or Raiden, but this not quite bullet hell shooter really is a hidden gem and great value if you're looking to unleash some laser death and score some trophies or achievements. I say not quite bullet hell, because although all three separate games on offer here are challenging, they're not the insurmountable gauntlet of eternal pain that only specially trained coke fueled cats have the reflexes to navigate. From the off you have the option to feel the claustrophobia of the first two excellent Japanese pixel art releases from 2000 and 2001, or you can make use of your entire modern TV and a good deal more pixels, and up to four players, with the modern reimagining of the game. The graphics are great across all three titles, and it's as cathartic as ever in this genre to ride your heavily armed flying motorbike into battle with one of several different characters, powering up to the point where you spew a wall of insta-death to all who are stupid enough to cross your path. There are limited, ultra-powerful special weapons that will turn enemy projectiles into harmless shards of crystal and batter bosses when things get tight, and you can also dash across the screen in short bursts to manoeuvre past incoming fire. There are very few one-hit kills, so for once, the casual gamer can get just as much out of this type of game as the hardcore experts. Samurai Showdown. The beauty of arcade games is their simplicity. You want to pick up the pad and get going within a few seconds. But as one-on-one -on -one fighters have made the jump from arcades into homes, more has been demanded of them to the point where they've become some of the most technical games out there. It's an understandable evolution, but sometimes you don't want to learn 15 varieties of parry, power bar or rev counter, whatever the hell that is. Just give me a massive fat bloke with an axe fighting some quicker, bouncy trollop with a tit spilling out everywhere in a straight fight and let's see who wins. Of course, it was the original Samurai Showdown games that were amongst the first to introduce these extra layers of complexity in the form of a rage meter, filled every time you get hit, and it still features prominently here. But I'm pleased to say that's about as far as complications go, and triggering each character's specific flashy special moves is no more difficult than inputting all the usual Street Fighter-style commands at the right time. 
Otherwise, this is quite a methodical fighter that rewards patience and experimentation rather than out and out button mashing or just being 12 and quicker on the buttons than everyone else. Every character looks great, fighting with and without weapons in different scenarios against some excellent backdrops. The game has a really chunky arcade feel, and while there are some fairly unmodern loading times between bouts, two player round robin battles with friends and a few beers is a spectacle every living room should experience. Now, here's one for the collectors. Clockwork Aquario holds the Guinness World Record for the time between a game's starting development and its eventual release. 28 years and 81 days. It makes Skull and Bones look like a rush job. Originally meant to have been released into the arcades in 1992, the game was cancelled by Sega at the last minute after some negative feedback during player testing. The House of Sonic had become keen to divert resources into more modern 3D technology and bolster their portfolio of fighting games which were incredibly popular at the time. Fast forward the best part of three decades and the brilliant retro revival studio Inin, based out of Berlin, have taken the largely complete Clockwork Aquario code and finally finished the game. The result is a truly joyful experience that will spread a grin across any face that has known the arcades of the late 80s and 90s. No one is going to tell you that this is the most complete or complex title, but as with every other game on this list, that's just the point. It's brilliant fun to play with responsive controls, enjoyable level design and bosses, a great soundtrack, two-player co-op and these excellent pixel art graphics. If you're a collector then Strictly Limited Games has been knocking out some physical copies, otherwise you can easily find Clockwork Aquario an often heavily discounted price on the usual digital storefronts. Arcade racers really are a dying breed. As much as it's a pleasure to see the side-scrolling beat-em-ups, platformers and metroidvanias thrive again, it seems that almost no one is taking a serious stab at a substantial, modern, straightforward racing game. Regular viewers may have seen the video I published late last year for five underrated games to play in 2024 and at the top of that pile is Wreckfest. Seriously, if you've not played that game, stop watching this video now and go and check out my older video or someone else's that will also show you some Wreckfest gameplay because it's one of the best races of all time. I really cannot stress that enough. If you offered me only one sequel to a game this year or any year, it'd be Wreckfest 2 exclusively for the modern consoles and PC all day long. But I digress. Trail Out is something of a homage to Wreckfest's forebears, the Flat Out games. In fact, in certain places it's a straightforward rip-off in the nicest possible way. What we have here is a hefty, brutal chunk of smash and dash racing across some excellent, largely destructible environments using everything from pristine sports cars to knackered farm trucks. In single player there's a story of sorts hopelessly wittering on in the background but you can largely ignore that and just get on with the racing, upgrading your vehicle as you make your way through some brilliantly organic tracks that snake through forests, towns and deserts. You also have the borrowed features like driver darts and bowling, which are fine additions, but really you don't need them when the racing is this much over the top fun. Trail Out has improved and expanded impressively since its initial release into early access and I do hope that this is the year that it finally makes it onto consoles. It doesn't quite have the planted weighty physics that Wreckfest enjoys, but it's still an excellent alternative until that much wanted sequel arrives. Sengoku is probably another series better known in the Far East than in Europe or the Americas, but like so many games that have been re-released into the excellent, ever-expanding ACA Neo Geo collection you'll find on the PS Store and related digital hubs, we now get to see what we've been missing out on for all these years. 
Sengoku 3 was released at a time when pixel art was simultaneously at its most advanced level and increasingly its most ignored, as all things Polygon had well and truly taken over, thanks in large part to a certain PlayStation 2. As you can see, the detail, animation and movesets have advanced way beyond the 80s trailblazers in the genre like Double Dragon and Final Fight, and while I could have chosen a million different brawlers for this video, I do feel that this one has one of the best blends of character design and playability compared to many side-scrollers that you can still buy today. Every player character here really does play differently, and the enemy variety and level design keeps things fresh throughout. Juggle combos are as easy to unleash as standard button mashing, and each punch, kick and slash registers with a satisfying arcade crunch, with meaty sound effects adding to the dopamine hit. Sengoku 3 is the product of years of bruising gameplay that began in the 80s, finessed to a fine samurai tip with a barrel of moves, options and playstyles. If classic pixel art brawling is your thing, please make sure you check this out. Get live, pig! You might have seen that I covered the earlier version of this game back in December 2023, but now it's back, bigger, better and boobier than ever before. I loved this game first time around, but one of the criticisms I had was the speed of movement, in the way that the characters shuffled across the screen too slowly to react to some of the action. I'm pleased to say that the developers have taken note, and this new special edition speeds things up to the point where you feel in complete control of your character in each level, able to duck, dive and dart through firefights and survive a lot longer than was previously possible. And that's certainly not all. We now have a new character ever so slightly based on Roger Moore's Bond, complete with a golden gun, in addition to some improved artwork that reduces some of the garishness seen in certain levels and a personal highlight of mine, the ability to tailor the controls to your liking on a gamepad. Hopefully these updates will also make it across to the console versions, but I know the small team at Monster Bath Games are absolutely swamped as it is, so if you have the choice, the PC version is the one to get for now. And it really is worth it. If you're an arcade fan of a certain vintage that loves a run and gun game, there haven't been any as funny, varied and lovingly crafted as this in recent years. As with Smash and Roll at the top of this list, I'm really happy to support a small studio when the output is as strong as this, now more than ever, and I can't wait to see what comes next. So, what arcade games are your favourites? Did anything surprise you here that you want to check out? Drop me a comment and a like if you wouldn't mind, and I'll be back very soon with more video games action. Cheers for now.